Hello everybody and welcome to Ask TV. I'm Cameron Luke and I am joined by Christian Malcolm. Of course, the Head of Performance and Coaching, the new Head of Performance and Coaching at Athletics Australia. He comes not with just a wonderful coaching career when it comes to great bitten athletics, in particular relays, but an accomplished athlete in his own right. Four-time Olympian medals, World Championships, Commonwealth Games, European Championships. We'll get to all that and plenty more. Christian, welcome to Australia and welcome to the role. Thank you, thank you. Exciting. Before we talk about your career, how excited are you right now to, to be as we head towards the World Championship and the Olympic Games in the next eight or so months? No, I am. I'm very excited about the role. It's, it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, I've always been a big fan of Australian athletics. I've trained many times over the years, warm weather training, and obviously competing in the Olympics and Commonwealth Games. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. And before we get to what you and how you see the role and how much pumped you are going to be in the next couple of months, let's just go back to your career because you've had a, an outstanding athletes career as well. We might go back to the 2010 European Championships first, silver medal in the 200 metres, beaten by an outstanding athlete. But <laughs> if you have a look at this, you're looking ripping form. You must have been almost at the, although you were later in your career, almost at the, the height of your physical well-being. Is that fair to say? Do you know what? Actually, I wasn't <laughs> in this particular race. Really? Tell us more. Yeah, well, before that, I had an Achilles problem, so I, I missed most of my window. I think mm -hmm. I got back into training maybe April time. Um, I didn't actually think I was going to make it to the Europeans, so I managed to qualify for the national championships, got to the Europeans, I just took it round by round, and, and to be in that position that I was coming in a home straight leading was a bit of a surprise for me, but the match had just got me. If it was 199 metres, yeah, I would have been European champion. Was, uh, ridiculous question, but when you come into the straight after the issues you've had and you can barely train at different points, does it go through your mind that you're almost amazing yourself that you're actually in front at that point at a major championship? Well, you've got to believe in yourself. Yeah. Right? You've got to back yourself. And, you know, you always have a plan. You plan to execute the race, and, and that's what I did, and it went well. So it was a case of, you know, just keep going, keep going, keep going, hanging on. But, you know, Christoph Lemaitre was in, was in fine form that year and, and the year before that. So, uh, unfortunately, he just got me. And you've had a wonderful career as a coach, or in particular when it comes to the relay side of you at Great Britain. We might go to 2017 World Championships because you had an extremely good 4x100 metre men's relay team. And, and this probably didn't shock you, but of course the Jamaicans had had almost a mortgage on this event for such a long period of time, <laughs> led by Usain Bolt, but you spoiled the party. <laughs> we did spoil the party. No, we, we knew we was in good shape and the guys were, were, were in great form. They were very confident going into the championships and they had a great self-belief. And also the women as well. The women did fantastic getting the silver medal. So I think that gave him a little bit of confidence uh, before uh, seeing the women get their silver medal and the men went out there and did it. When you go into an event like that, and of course Usain Bolt finishing up on what has been a huge career, and you essentially, not ruin the fairy tale, because unfortunately, as we saw there, the Jamaicans didn't get a medal anyway due to an injury, but is it a weird feeling when the whole crowd's there to see Jamaica win and say goodbye to Usain Bolt, yet you were so dominant? Do you know what the, do you know what the funny thing is? I was there in, in this, obviously I was there in the stadium, sat there, but where I was sat, and I was sat at trackside level, and you saying where he pulled his hamstring was, was right, right in front of me. And he pulled his hamstring, and I was looking at him, and I looked at the race, finished the race, I went, okay, the guys are in the top two, and I looked back at you saying. So even myself was a bit shocked, and, and obviously felt for you saying, but the fact is the guys gone on, did their job, won the gold, was brilliant. When you look at now the role at Athletics Australia, and you've been involved for so long at Great Britain as both an athlete, on board level as well, as well as a coach, what, what excites you? What enticed you to, to move to Australia and be a part of Athletics Australia at this crucial time? Well, I, I, you know, like I said before, you know, I spent quite a lot of time in Australia training. Nah, so you just love the country. You just, you just come into a better climate. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> a little bit. Nah, no, it, it's, it's a great opportunity to come over here and, and help just help the sport. You know, you've got great coaching at your great facilities. You always have done. You know, hence the reason why we used to come over here in the early 2000s. And, and for me to have this opportunity to come here and just help with the coaching structure um, and just try and help that little one percent. You know, when I retired, I, I didn't want to be a coach. I didn't want to go into it. But what I found towards the end of my career that I was helping a lot of other athletes and the things I was doing seemed to be working. Um, it's not just the relays I worked with. I worked with a lot of power athletes and got success with them as well. So to be able to come over here and to be able to hopefully help get those structures right, help those 1% and, and get that communication right the way through, not just at elite level, but grassroots level as well, you know, hopefully I can be successful in that. How do you go sitting in the stands? You touched on being such a, a competitor. How, how did you make that transition to being there, having an input into your athletes running or whatever it might be, throwing or jumping, yet 
once you've put them onto the track, <laughs> you're done when it comes to all you can do. How do you go sitting in the stands and dealing with that? Um, it's very nerve-wracking. Yeah. I know that. I, I, do you get I, more nervous now in the stands than you did on track? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, I always thought I got nervous. You get a little bit of nerves and adrenaline when you're running, but actually, when you're actually watching someone and watching, obviously, your athletes who you care about and you work through all year round and you know the, the hard work they're putting into it, it, um, it does get you adrenaline, does go. But, um, you know, for me, I just feel like that I'm just trying to help the people out there, you know, don't make the mistakes that we made in our careers and, it, and just keep that evolution going, just to make them improve and make them better. I ask so many people this in, in any sport, whatever it might be, as we head towards huge major events, of course, the World Championships in Doha this year and then on the back of 2020 to the Olympic Games, which you, you know so much about. Even though you're not on track, but you're obviously now in, in the role you are, do you get out of bed in the morning excited about what the next 18 months is going to bring? Yeah, I am excited, but I'm more excited about getting out there. You know, I want to get out and I want to meet the people. I want to find out, you know, what is going on in Australian athletics. You know, I know a little bit myself, but I want to know what is needed. What, what, what can we do to help rebuild? So a part of my role is, is getting out there as much as I can. I'm going to be obviously at the Sydney Classic this weekend. Um, and I just want to be able to talk and just find out what, what is I can do and, and what I know I can do. And, uh, and see what happens. When you go to the Sydney Track Classic, which is going to be chop block of many of the Australian high profile athletes, both established and emerging stars, are you meeting the athletes? Are you meeting the coaches? What is the, the number one goal from you over the next couple of weeks as we see some of these, uh, these meets? What is it for you? Who do you touch base with first? The athletes, the coaches, the administrators? How does it all work for you? Um, I think it's, it's a bit of a, a holistic approach. I have to talk to the athletes, I have to talk mm -hmm. to the coaches, and yes, the administrators as well. I have to go out there and, and find out what they feel is missing and what they feel they need to help them and make the athletes better. You know, that's what we want. You know, I think if I was to leave this role, it's, it's having a great structures in place just to help those athletes, not only just to make finals, but to make podiums then as well. And it's up to them if they want to become champions. So, you know, what can we do to help that? And that's why I'm going to be out there and asking those questions. Fair, fair to say in your role then, you're going to be very open. There's going to be a lot of open dialogue where coaches, athletics, or, or athletes, whoever it might be, feel comfortable in, in picking up the phone or dropping in by your office, wherever you're based, yeah. and saying day and saying, look, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to get to, or this is not working, this is working, whatever it is, be. So it's yeah. two-way open conversation for yourself. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm not going to go here and say I've got all the answers. You know, you may have the answers that themselves, and it's just better. how can we help and support that? You know, I'm, I'm definitely not the guy that's going to hide behind emails and just send their emails out. I, I think the, the best thing is communication, actually going to listen to what they really want. You had some board-level experience as well. Do you reckon that helps you in that role in, in the one you're currently in? Yeah, I think it does. You know, obviously, uh, sit on a board in the board in the last three or four years, which I have with Welsh Athletics and Sport Wales, and that helped me learn a lot about the other side and what's needed as well, and, and how we can get these structures in place and get the strategy plans. Do you, do you think, from an athlete point of view, now being on the board and spending three or four years as you did, you understand a little bit of the politics of it? As an <laughs> athlete, it's always like, how come this isn't happening? <laughs> and then you realise. Do you think it helps you accept it a little bit more as, as you oh, definitely. get the inner sanctum? Yeah, it definitely does. You know, it, it's not a case of, oh, it's made me go totally look on the other side, but what it's given me is a good balance now, understanding what it is to be on the board, what it is in an administrative, administrative role and what is needed there. But also, I know what it takes to be an athlete. I know what it takes to get to the top so I can help there. But the coaches as well, they need the support and they need the right structures in place to support them through. You still go for a run every now and then? No, no, no. no don't, I none don't at all. A bit so, of football, so that's about fo it. Uh, OK, so any athletes who say, hey, let's go for a quick, you know, couple of k's just to warm up, you're like, ah, you're on your own there. I'm a sprinter. You're I'll a sprinter. Go, You've never probably okay. run a couple of k's. That's a really good point. <laughs> hey, Christian, welcome. How long have you been here for? Uh, almost a week. How's the jet lag? It's kicking in a little bit. Okay. The first few days were okay, but now it's getting yeah. a little bit. We'll get a couple of power naps in before Saturday because the Sydney Trek Classic, as you said, is going to be huge. Congratulations on the role. Welcome here and, and looking forward to having a huge and successful role at Athletics Australia. Cheers, thank you.